Um, so, yeah, the pattern I'm obviously colour <laughs> inspiration. So I did a whole bunch of tests oxidising sheets of copper, which I then photographed, um, and I did some series of drawings and stuff off the photographs. Uh, I then scanned things into the computer um, and used the images in my drawings to, uh, to, yeah, to create patterns in CAD. So um, I have some of the work uh, is just a full, full sort of size image and then other work like this uh, are repeat patterns, 40 by 40 centimetre repeat patterns, sort of simplified versions of my sketches and things that they had. Um, yeah, so I guess the garments themselves, I, uh, I wore one to hand operated Jack Harbour. Um, the three vests here, the style here, yeah, it uh, took a week to make. Um, I dyed all of the indigo, so I used a, a thick, quite a thick linen that I uh, dyed. Um, which is the pale colour, and then I used a thin silk cotton, which is the dark, the dark indigo. Um, yeah, the way that it's woven is in a, a double weave. So I am um, when yeah when the thick could have been for everyone here. It's a hand hand weaver as well. Yeah, the inside. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when one colour is at the top, the other colour mm -hmm. is at the back, essentially. Um, yeah, so, and I also did, when I was weaving, I did two picks of the thin cotton silk and then one pick of the linen. So, if you went after, if you have a look at the texture, you can sort of see the difference in size and I guess the linen is raised a little bit. Um, yeah, so yeah, I dyed a lot of indigo and <laughs> that took me about a week to get all of the yarn that I needed for this. Yeah, that was probably the biggest part of the project actually. It was dying for days and days on end. Um, yeah, so for, for these pieces here, uh, I actually hand painted the walk using copper textile paint. Uh, and then all of these little individual areas here, I did a sort of brocade style. So while, I guess, with, yeah, with the fabric, the, the indigo linen was going from one side of the walk to the other. And then just in these little sections here, I, uh, I wove in the, like, the little copper details, um, which also took a really long time. Um, yeah, so I would hand paint about 30 centimetres of the wall uh, with a copper textile paint, and then I would have to dry it individually pull apart um, 2,500 ends. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so it, would take, it took a long, a long time, and then I would weave the 30 centimeters to so wind it on, do that again and again. Um, yeah. So what did I do? So yeah, so I, for the for the vests, everything that I've done here is also zero waste pattern making, uh, which essentially means that um, you design the clothing according to the fabric that you have rather than sort of getting the fabric or making the fabric for the design, for the garment design. Um, so for the best, uh, the piece of fabric was one metre by one metre that I then cut down the middle, um, used, used the scraps to create yeah, these little sort of holy bits, I guess. Yeah, like I said, none of this is stuff that you would actually ever really wear, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, it's definitely an armor-like feel to the whole thing, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so for the, for the jackets, these were woven um, using the pick and old jack loom that they have at RMIT. Uh, yeah, that did three metres of fabric in ten minutes. So after the week that it took me to wear to hand weave the other pieces, that was, yeah, that was quite nice. 
not, yeah, the feel is not as nice, I don't think, as the hand But yeah, it certainly was a lot bigger. Um, yeah, these, the jackets and the way that the Picanol loom works is that um, it has to be in a 40 by 40 centimetre repeat pattern. Um, yeah, whereas the vests, the metre that I wore was just one image, it didn't repeat. Um, so every single area was different, I guess. Um, yeah, and then the bottom of this jacket I uh, hand painted using the same textile, copper textile paint that we did in these pieces here. So yeah, not, not very practical, but <laughs> it's nice for now. Um, oh yeah, so this piece here, which is actually, I think, my favourite piece and probably the most wearable out of everything. Uh, after I um, made the garment, I then dip dyed it in indigo uh, for not very long. So I, it's the same colour, I use the same blue, and it's obviously the same white. Um, and so, yeah, you seem to just get quite a sort of raised effect, I guess, which I really like. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, all of this is sort of an exploration for me of what I would like to do this year and how I'm sort of going to take my skills, I guess, and translate it into something that it was sort of a little bit more commercial, but still sort of holds on to the idea of, um, of I guess, bespoke one-off pieces, focused on sustainable and slow design. So, yeah, I think that, that jacket and this style of work is probably what I would have concentrate on for the rest of the year. Um, so yeah, so everything that I make here was, yeah, it's, yeah zero waste, so there's, there's literally nothing, like having the scraps of this jacket, I uh, yeah, made a waistband, um, same with that one, but lost, and we've lost that one. <laughs> um, so to go along with the idea of these kind of very over-the-top outfits, <laughs> um, I started exploring, I did a jewellery fundamentals elective at RMIT, um, so I started Sort of playing with the copper that I oxidized for the initial designs for this. Um, yeah, and made these sort of, again, very armor like <laughs> jewelry pieces. Um, yeah, they, I mean, I quite like some of them. I think the necklaces is something that I'm focusing on now. I think the, uh, the bracelets are again a little bit over the top, <laughs> but you know, it suited, it suited the outfit. Um, yeah, I have, yeah, so I've drilled, uh, when the piece was flat before it was shaped, I drilled holes into it, um, yeah, sanded it, sort of shaped it, um, and then oxidized it, uh, and then sealed, sealed the oxidization using a wax, and, yeah, and then shaped it, and then wove it into the areas using the leftover yarn that I had. So, um, yeah, with all of my projects, I try to use sort of everything that I, that I have. So I, yeah, I, um, I dyed a lot of indigo yarn, so I still have quite a lot, but I think I'm, I'm hopefully going to use some projects here. How about a couple of green when it oxidizes? Depends on how you oxidize it. Oh, yeah, nice. so some of the stuff that I did, did go green. And, but then I found online, I found a good recipe that used uh, vinegar, salt, and ammonia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that seems good. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah. Obviously, the Copper just oxidizes as well naturally over years when you touch it and you will develop, develop a sort of brown and green patina. But yeah. So, um, so, oh, so then, yeah, I guess so. I, and also, I brought in a couple of other things that I did that I've done over the last year. Um, as you can see, I very much like indigo. <laughs> this was. Uh, yeah, this is another project where I explored um, shibori weaving. Um, this is blanket here. Uh, shibori weaving is basically where you weave in the shibori ties into, into the actual fabric. So once it comes off the loom, um, you have, yeah, you sort of have these, these ties that you can pull, you can tie, you can fold it and tie it around. Um, yeah, this this one here and these ones here. Okay, is that perfect? Yeah, and then once once you sort of bundled it all up and tied it, 
um, and normal shibori style. You dye it and then once it's sort of all washed and cleaned, you actually remove the ties that had been woven into the fabric. Um, yeah, so it's just a different way, I guess, of just instead of the normal way of shibori where you sort of bundle up a piece of fabric and tie it off or you fold it and plant it, yeah, you're actually weaving it into the fabric. Um, yeah, I think most of my work focuses on either indigo or neutral colours or sort of earthy colours. Rust colours. Um, yeah, so that was just a blanket or a shawl. Um, so this is a project that I did a little while ago, which is something that I'm sort of starting to further work on now. Um, which is, I guess, the idea of using tapestry style techniques uh, for wearables. Um, so yeah, what I'm hoping to do while I'm here is, um, is develop this into, into all the some jewelry pieces and into garments as well. So working on my loom, um, just the time, I think, more than anything. Um, yeah, I, I want to explore creating, creating fabric that has, I guess, a much more natural feel that's happening than fabric that's made on a loom traditionally does. So instead of the idea of the pattern that runs sort of, you know, left to right, um, just trying to create, yeah, more, a more natural feel. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but um, a lot of the stuff that, which I don't have any pictures of, that I did at uni, um, it just feels quite rigid, I guess, in a way. Um, and yeah, I still want to explore ways of sort of stepping away from that. So, yeah, hopefully that's what I'll be doing here in the next few weeks. But um, these pieces here uh, were made entirely from scrap yarns. So over the last three years at uni, I've been collecting all of the warp ends from all of the students. Um, and I've been collecting sort of any scraps. We have recycling bins, recycling bins. So I've been sort of digging through and collecting scraps. So, yeah, all of the yarn is... Yeah, it's going in again, I guess. Um, and then I also dyed a lot of it using matarut. Um, and then, yeah, the matarut and turmeric. I did a lot of dyeing with. And yeah, and then all the copper that I use is recycled copper as well. Um, but yeah, that was based off um, my garden going from autumn into winter. <laughs> the sort of disintegrating leaves and, and uh, yeah, the decay, I guess, the decay of of the garden. I think most of my inspiration comes from natural elements. Um, yeah. So that was a series of necklaces and wall hangings. Um, that, yeah, they're, I would have brought them in, but they're all, they're all gone down there in an exhibition a little while ago and managed to sell them all. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, yeah, this is sort of what I have been doing on the side at uni as well as um, really simple necklaces, again using all of the scraps that I've collected, um, yeah, oxidizing some of them, leaving some of them plain. Um, yeah, and that seems to be going, going quite well, but I'm going to yeah, hopefully develop that over the year as well. So yeah, that's, that's my work. <laughs> Um, yeah, I sort of want to spend this year trying to develop a business plan, I suppose, figuring out how I can take everything that I've done in the last three years and turn it into something that can be commercial, but at the same time, so sort of trying to hold on to the idea of slow design, sustainable design. Um, I, I like fashion, I like working in fashion, but I hate the way that uh, I hate what it's become, I hate the modern idea of fashion. Um, and yeah, I think it, it would be for, for me be really interesting to be a part of the people who are starting to try and change the way that's looked at. Um, so creating you know, creating one off bespoke designs or creating things that people can form emotional attachments to so that they want to hold on to it and maintain some kind of longevity and they, they keep it forever rather than the idea of fast fashion. 
you know, they, they consume and they discard and reject it as soon as you know, they're sick of it. So, yeah, I think through this, this project and through everything that I've done over the last few years, it's just been figuring out a way of, of being able to do that in the future. So, yeah, I think my residency here will be a part of that. Um, and then, yeah, the whole year, I think um, I'm going to spend trying to figure that out, do a lot of testing. But um, my idea eventually is to have a sort of very small um, label that focuses in, um, on yeah, bespoke design and um, small one-off runs. So I might um, find a beautiful yarn and dye it and then weave 10 metres of it and then maybe get five balance out of it and then that, that's it, you know. Um, and make everything from, from hand, by hand, from scratch. Um, yeah, and just try to encourage people, I suppose, to save up for a year to buy something rather than constantly buying, you know, every week buying hundreds of items a year rather than one or two items a, week, a year. So yeah, that's what my work is about. <laughs>